All right. Now, I mean, we were talk about, you know, the whole thing there between uh, Raymond Ford and short dog Jordan White. And those are, you know, two high profile fighters there in the 130 pound division uh, who, you know, is I, I would say that super featherweight division has a number of uh, good fighters out there. You know, you had uh, the uh, WBC champion, now two time WBC champion there, no shopping foster uh, with the win there over Rose because say Sal and we have like another uh, title fight that's coming up. That's a rematch uh, there between um, Oscar Valdez and Emmanuel Navarrete. Uh, so, you know, kind of like. Oh, oh, oh. Well, you get into the, the, the Valdez in a fight. All right. Shocky. All right. Shock versus Conce Sal. What, what was your thoughts? Were you at that fight? I wasn't at this fight in Verona. Okay. okay. What were your thoughts? Now, this fight in Verona had a little bit more action. Then the fight in Newark by far, <laughs> by far, right? Um, in that fight in Newark, Oshaki Foster just like outboxed and pretty much schooled uh Robson Kose side. Not even close. Yeah, it wasn't even close, right? Okay. So, in this fight, you had Kose Sal be more active on offense, but for me, his offense wasn't clean, it wasn't that clean. And you see, like, from a – where it's, you know how they had a judging criteria and all this thing about – and they had the term effective aggression? Like, the aggression from Ropes and Conceição in this fight over in Verona wasn't effective. He looked, you know, very predictable. He had, like, a number of arm punches that he was throwing. And you could see that um, – you could see that Foster was able to, you know, properly defend against a number of those shots. Now, yeah, it ended up being uh, closer, I would say, on the scorecards or whatnot, so to speak, or at least on my end. But it's still, you know, Oshaki Foster there that I felt like was a better fighter, and he was a better fighter in the first fight, was a better fighter in this fight. So, you know, with the judges here, they are able to, you know, get him the decision victory and have him as now the two-time WBC super featherweight champion uh, there. But, you know, even with this one, they almost robbed him. Once again, they almost robbed him. A split decision. You know, you had seven rounds to five. Two of those seven five cards were for Foster, and one of those seven five cards were for Conceição. So, hey, man, I, I don't know, man. It kind of seems like uh, I, I might say it, that it almost seems like Top Rank almost didn't want him to have the belt. <laughs> it's crazy. See, I watched both fights. I felt like Foster could have done more to separate himself in the judge's eye offensively. You know, some judges like different things. Yeah. And they're looking for different things. Some judges might like the aggression of a Kansai Sao. You know, because it depends on, too, which part of the ring they're sitting at. Yeah. So they could see him with his back turned just going. Mm -hmm. And that might look like he's getting off. You know, Shaq could be over there doing all this. But to the, to the judge who's seeing the back, they just seeing a person in the corner that don't look good to them. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's what I'm saying. Shaq could have done more in both fights, I feel like, to offensively show. I'm beating this guy up as well. Because you're fighting. It's not just avoiding punches, but you also have to score. And I'm not saying Shock wasn't, but what I'm saying is he could have done more offensively to show I'm controlling this offensively and defensively. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm 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 dictating the pace. Conse Sal was bringing some pressure. Especially this last fight, Conse Sal. And his shots look like they had some pop on him. You know what I'm saying? He had a little bit of crack under both all his punches. You know what I mean? Like he and, and it was like certain points in his last fight with shot. Probably I'm gonna say, I don't remember exactly, but just I'm gonna say middle, midway, where it's like he kind of was fading mentally. Mm. Like he would fade mentally out of there. And his corner was like, yo, you know, come on. Like, like man, you know, like he just mentally wasn't. In that mode oh, to yeah, huh? Like amped up. 
it, like mentally he was just defeated or you know what I'm saying? I don't want to say defeated, but because that's a long fight. I don't know if people realize that sometimes those fighters in those fights can mentally drift away. You know, the first four rounds, they 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 adrenaline running, they end the fight, but then like sometimes they can start to drift mentally. Whereas, like, you know, they, they could be getting beat up. They could be getting tagged. They could be pressure. It could be they reflexes. It could be a multiple of things where in their head, they just waiting for the bell to ring. That's what I'm saying, drifting. Mm. Not like, all right, I'm going out there. What are you looking like? Okay, I'm going out the next round. I got to stay in this chest and keep touching them more. You know what I mean? Like, it would be certain points where I could see, like, shock wasn't necessarily the aggressor. Mm -hmm. You know, and I feel like you always have to be – a controlled aggressor like Floyd, he's one of those two guys that can get away with this, you know. Yeah, but so somebody, you gotta beat these guys up. I'm not saying go out there and brawl Mike Tyson style, but I'm gonna give you an example. It was the the same fight that they fought when Keyshawn fought on that card as well, right? Up in New York, I mean Newark. He gave him a now. Yeah, he was fighting, and that was a tough fight for Keyshawn, right? Yeah. But there would be points in it because they were doing a lot of grabbing and wrestling and all of that. There still will be points in the rounds, even though it'll be sloppy a little bit, where Keyshawn was still standing there, even though they'd be wrestling and tired. Look like Keyshawn was tired a little bit in there. Um, he was standing there and still beat this guy up a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, he was standing there and show you he'll land a one, two, three, four, five, six punch yeah. combination. Where okay, to a judge, this the you know that looks good. You can steal the round. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They might not remember what you did the first half of the round. They probably remember that last minute and 30 for real. Yeah. So whoever looking the more busier, that last minute and 30, they're going to remember. Mm -hmm. And there would be points in that fight where Keyshawn might look sloppy for the first minute and 30 of that round. But then he still would come out to me and steal the round because he would say, you know, okay, I know I got to land some punches on this dude. And then once you get that crowd behind you, that, ooh, ooh, that's going to sway you. Yeah, because you know, they gonna say, okay, those are punch, those punches must be landing. That's gonna help the the judges see it better. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like that, that's a prime example. That fight right there, where it wasn't the most pretty fight, but Keyshawn still would do enough. You know what I'm saying? Where I said, like in my head, if I was in his corner, I would say I felt confident, even though we're not where we need to be. He still he not leaving it in the judges' hands. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I ain't going to say he's not leaving it in their hands, but he's making it tougher for them to say that was around for, for Buddy. Because mm -hmm. he would come out a little bit and step on the gas. You know what I'm saying? I felt like for yeah. going back to shock, he didn't do that enough where, you know, defensively he would roll. He might land one or two. Yeah, I mean, I wanted to see three punch combinations or combo, you know what I'm saying? Enough to show, like, all right, I'm having my way. Yeah. You know, and that's what I feel like for me, Shock could have done a better job of asserting himself or to separate the show offensively. This guy's throwing, but I'm beating this guy up as well. You know what I'm saying? I didn't see enough coming back from Shock. Except for in, like, in those later rounds, he started to dig a little bit more. But yeah, yeah. What'd you think? So he, there were a number of times there where he would throw like one or two punches at a time. And so, you know, you can have the, those moments where you're defensively sound and everything like that. But, you know, whether you're attacking them one or two times on television, it may look effective. But to your point, and this is, you know, one thing that, you know, kind of bring up when it comes to judges. Judges are right there in the ring at, you know, three different parts of the squared circle. So what we see on TV, they might not be able to see sitting there ring, you know, ringside, you know? So, like you said, if one judge is at one part of the ring and they have, they see in the back of, you know, Conceição, and they see Conceição throwing punches, and they really see it like Foster throwing that but many punches, then maybe they say, hey, you know, in this particular round, I just felt like Conceição, you know, did more offensively, whether he landed or he didn't. They just feel mm -hmm. like he did more. So, in a sense, you can say, hey, maybe, you know, uh, like Tom Shrek was one of the judges there for the rematch. Like, he was the one that scored it 115 to 113 for Conceição. So, maybe he said, you know what? 
from what I've seen at the spot that I'm at, I see Conceição doing more in those rounds in comparison to what Foster is doing, while the other two judges may have a different look and say, hey, we see Foster doing this. We see Foster catching and slipping. We see Foster being, you know, more effective with his offense. And that's probably why, you know, they kind of favor, you know, him in, in, in that particular instance. So, um, but, yeah, we, we probably have to see a little bit more from uh, Oshaki Foster later on down the line. Um, you know, him getting a WBC title back means that either – I know. I hope they don't have another Kevin Zaysa fight. So we will probably have to wait for the winner of, um, you know, uh, Oscar Valdez uh, there in Emmanuel Navarrete for a unification there under top rank. So you got that. I wouldn't be mad at seeing him fight Kevin Zaysa again, bro. They split. They won and won, right? Yeah, yeah, they won. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they are like both. I said, I need to see a full, for me, bro. I. I, I <laughs> what would shut the door on that is a complete performance. Yeah, I feel you. I feel I'm not seeing a complete performance from. You know what I mean, like I see room where it's like depends on what kind of fight style you like. It's not like he just flat out shutting this guy out. Conse style was landing, bro. Mm -hmm. Like all the punches he throwing, I know they're not just trash punches. Like them, just, some of the punches was touching shot. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And shock to me, like I say, didn't answer those combinations. I don't care if he throws 75 punches, Conseil Sal, and land three, but you throw two back that land. To me, I personally still would give it to Conseil Sal because he's dictating the pace of the fight. You know what I'm saying? That's one of the criteria, ring generalship. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, you can stand there, but two punches to 17 it's not like he missing wildly like he just you feel those punches i don't care what you say they could block it you still feel that when you in there and that that with the pop that yeah, i'll say out throwing you can feel that force mm -hmm. you can feel that force in there you know what i'm saying i think like i say shock i would want to see him shock got that dog in him for sure i, t I seen that when he fought nova Mm -hmm. Well, he kind of had to dig in there and go find that dog and win that belt. You know what I'm saying? Not not win that belt, defend his belt. Like that. You know what I'm saying? Shock's few performances. I haven't seen one of those. Like, I don't know if it's 50-50 fights. Yeah. Is it the fights making style? Like, he's been in some, like, his last few performances have been tough. Yeah. Like, he's, he's had to earn... You know what I'm saying? It's, it's been tough. So I guess I don't know if that's the the style. I don't know if he got something going on. I don't know. I don't know, bro. Or if it's just boxing just tough. I, don't, I guess that's what it is, too. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure, man. I mean, you know, he's out there with, uh, you know, Coach Bobby Benton, uh, who, you know, also uh, traded, uh, you know, former uh, world champion that reached the pro grace. Uh, but you know, he's had, you know, like you said, a number of tough fights ever since, you know, winning the title, you know, uh, there at 130 pounds, he's been in tough fights. Uh, so, you know, I guess we, we have to see if he's able to, you know, properly improve on, uh, what's been going down or if he could, uh, you know, have more of a complete performance, maybe it gets, uh, you know, a different style of fighter, uh, there that's not like Rose and say style that I guess has that background, uh, what is it, gold medalist, Olympic gold medalist out of Brazil and everything like that. So maybe it's the, uh, I guess, the overall skill of the opponent that could, you know, make uh, Osaki Foster kind of like do something different uh, against uh, opponents there in the future. So we'll see how that goes. Now, you did mention uh, one fighter uh, there as far as like a comparison, as far as like, you know, how to control uh, a fight or control a round. And he pretty much controlled the night there in the main event on Friday night, Norfolk, Virginia, and that is a businessman, Keyshawn Davis. He was able to get that second round knockout win over Gustavo Lemos. Uh, they're headlining that bout in Norfolk. Lightweight division, uh, won a number of, or, you know, pretty much offended a couple of, uh, you know, minor titles there, the Intercontinental title, the USA lightweight title there for the WBC, and the IBF Intercontinental title, you know. Uh, he's definitely been shooting up the rankings there in the lightweight division, you know, number three in the WBC, 
and in the IBF and in the WBO, you know. Uh, and the way that they were talking, like after the fight, it's looking like they may lean towards him maybe getting a world title shot next. It just depends on who. But I'm saying that, you know, after the performance against Gustavo Lemos, he has like a, a lot of stock that's being – you know, bought into the businessman here. And also going off of his, you know, previous fight that he had that we mentioned there against Miguel Montueño. I think a lot of people are, you know, kind of leaning towards Keyshawn being one of those guys to watch out for there in the lightweight division. What you, what you think about that uh, performance? No, Keyshawn definitely, I mean, he's a, first of all, he's a Olympic medalist. So that's a, a tough thing to accomplish. So we we, we know he can fight. And he's not just a medalist, he's a silver medalist. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, a round or two away from being the best amateur fighter in the entire world. So he definitely, you know what I'm saying, deserving of a world title shot. Um, 12 fights, 8 KOs. His last few performances, I definitely think, I mean, I will put him in there next with Whoever challenged for a title last, he will fight whoever. You know what I'm saying? Whoever he trying, whoever he trying to go to, whoever fought that champion last is who he would fight. Just so I can see where he at. Mm. So whatever, whatever section body he want to go for, if he want to go for a Beren, was it a Berencheck with a WBO? Yeah. Whoever Berencheck made his last fight against, that's who I want to see Keyshawn go against. Just to see, you know what I'm saying? Because. Well, I mean, that couldn't necessarily happen because, remember, Berenchik won the vacant belt. Oh, did he? Okay, I'll see. I don't, I don't really know too much about Berenchik. Let me check Berenchik out right quick. Remember, he see. fought uh, Navarrete uh, there for, for the belt. So, uh, he, you know, he was out there, you know, getting that win. Uh, what I would say? Uh, he's in the same, He's in the IBF as well, though, right? Keyshawn's up there in, like, top. The top. IBF. Yep. yep. What is he number? What, what is he ranked in the IBF? He is ranked number three in the IBF, as I mentioned. Yeah, number three in the IBF. So who number two? Uh, you have William Zapata uh, above him. Like, there's no like number two. Like the IBF, the IBF, and they'll have something where they'll have nobody ranked at number two or something like that. But the top ranked fighter in the IBF is William Zapata. Okay. Um. Well, Keyshawn, 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 ready? I don't know if he gets. Do you think he gets the title shot next? He could. I didn't really press one of the lead guys in top rank about it, but I said that, you know, given the amount of fans that were able to be there at the Scope Arena, that I say Keyshawn Davis could be in like any type of venue there in the area and it's going to sell out. So at least ask them at the very least, are they going to have him have his next fight in Norfolk? And they were like, no, they'll have him, you know, somewhere else. And then depending on what happens there, then they'll have him back in Norfolk. So that it gives me the inclination that he'll have, you know, a big fight coming up next in 2025. Now, what that is, I wouldn't necessarily be sure because you have a few guys out there that are, you know, in a way top, with top rank or fought under top rank there at lightweight. You mentioned Dennis Berenchik. You have Ray Murataya. And you have Vasil Lomachenko. Berenchik I think Lomachenko is going to hang it up, bro. Lomachenko, I mean, he's 36. All these young guys, you know what I'm saying? He had that point where it's like, mm -hmm. he probably don't want to lose to these young guys, or these non-accomplished. Now, I, I've said this. It's not that he doesn't want to lose against these guys. I don't think he wants to get it to the point where he gets stopped against one of these guys. Yeah, no, nah, for sure, for sure, for sure, Absolutely. So that so to me, with you know what was going on earlier this year, as far as like him potentially fighting Tank Davis, and him saying, ah, oh, you know what, I'll, I'll I'll take the rest of the year off. Now, as you stated, it looks like he's leaning towards retirement, and you're not the first person to say that, you know, in, in a conversation. So hey, I would be surprised if Slobodenko just ends up retiring as the IBF champion. He just you know wanted to get that opportunity to win a world title once again. Did that against George Cambosis Jr. And then after that, he's like, all right, I, I'm good. So, yeah, I, I think that's going to be uh, something there with the, having the IVF make it. So maybe 
You could have, uh, I don't know, Keyshawn versus Raymond Tyre for the vacant IBF then. That that will work. See, because also, too, for me, bro, like certain fighters, I feel like earn the right to be picky with their fights. You know, I know a lot of the casual fans like to say, well, this person is and this person is. Like, I, I for, for example, music example, Canelo versus Benavidez, right? Mm. I feel like Canelo has earned that right to not want to fight Benavidez. You know what I'm saying? Like, at this point in his career. Canelo is at that point where he's on, like, basically, to me, doing a fair rail tour. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I'm not trying to be out. He's once he went up and fought B Vol at 175, that was his last like bit of youthful like. Hunger. No, I still can. You, you know, know, I'm hunger, still the man. I'm still the yeah, still the man. Still like you know, one of those guys that you could consider top pound for pound. You know, that's now what... that he lost it. Like, all right, I'm a little older. You know, what I'm saying I've done all my tough fighting. I fought Triple G three times. I fought Floyd. I fought Lara. I fought. You know what I'm saying? I've moved up multiple times in weight classes. I've done everything I can do against all the top guys. I beat champions from 147 to 154 to 160 to 168. He's got a belt at 175. He at one point in time thought about going up to heavyweight or something like that. You know what I mean? Where like, you know what? For me, I'm a, I'm a diehard Canelo fan. He's earned that right to say, you know what? Benavidez is a real challenge for the size and his youthfulness and everything that he presents to me at this point in my career. I'm not the same young lion that I used to be. Now, if he would have caught me three, four years ago, I would have jumped on him. Mm. But I'm not the same to be trying to tackle that. You know what I'm saying? Like That's just an example. Like Certain fighters like Crawford. Crawford can be picky with saying, hey, I don't, I'm not looking this way. You know what I'm saying? Because these guys, like, mm -hmm. I feel like you have to earn it. Now, not just beating one champion and say you earn it. Like, a guy that's multiple time undisputed, multiple time world champions, you know what I'm saying? You got to go out there and really, like, Benavidez tried, though. Mm -hmm. I can't say that. Benavidez definitely went out there and fought all the top guys that he could. Who he fought? Boo Boo, right? He fought Boo Boo. Yep. He stopped Boo Boo, didn't he? Yep. He fought Caleb Plant. He stopped Plant, right? Decision. Okay. Who who did he fight before uh Plant? Uh before Caleb Plant. That was uh hold on. Because I was like, because that was like 2023. That that's what he was doing was to play it in the air trade. And then before that, it was David LeVue he stopped. And then Cairo Davis, then Dorado Ellis, and you go back. Like, he was having that stopping streak, you know, building okay. the up there in the super middleweight division while, you know, either at one point holding the WBC belt or, you know, not holding the WBC belt. So, you know, with that whole technicality and whatnot. But he was still, you know, doing his thing uh, there in the super middleweight division. But, he, you know, he just got to a point where it's like, you know what? I'm not really going to be chasing Canelo. I'm going to make my own legacy. But on the flip side, you know, like you said, Canelo has a Hall of Fame resume. He fought multiple world champions. He fought Floyd Mayweather, Miguel Cotto, Gennady Golovkin, you know, went up there and fought Sergey Kovalev to win a 175-pound title. You know what I mean? He on his farewell tour, bro. Yeah, yeah. It knocked out Caleb Plant. You know, he knocked out Caleb Plant to become undisputed champion at Super Bowl. Uh, midway. So, yeah, he can pretty much you'll be on his farewell tour. I know that he said, hey, you know, after his uh, bout against, uh, you know, Jamel Charlo, he's saying, no one beats this Canelo, but from a business perspective, if you're getting that money, regardless if you face Jamel Charlo, uh, 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 Jaime Magia, and then here in this latest case, Edgar Belanga, and people still buying, then you don't really need to, you know, fight no you know, David Benavidez or even a Terrence Crawford, because, like, for your next fight, you could fight freaking Christian and Billy or uh, 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 who, who's that other dude uh, there at Super Middleweight? You know what I'm saying? Like, he he could fight any of those guys. At William Super Skull, League. is that the dude you're talking about? Oh, yeah, William Skull. Well, that's who he vacated the belt for. Cause it's oh, like, okay. It's cool. But maybe, like, a Diego Pacheco, right? Like, he could fight a Diego Pacheco and, and still get that money and still have enough interest to where 
the fight generates enough revenue for it to be profitable. So if it's like that, then it's like, what's the point of him, you know, trying to fight a David Benavidez, even though that probably would be the biggest fight in boxing right now. So, and, and the same goes with, you know, like uh, Terrence Crawford, right? He did what he had to do, become two division undisputed champion. The pinnacle was against Errol Spence Jr. And that was, you know, 2023, the biggest fight in boxing. So after that, he's like, you know what? I'm I'm for the most lucrative fights possible. They looking at it like this, man. I ain't looking at you know what I'm saying? That's yeah, how they now, looking now, at it. Now they're they're the, the the pure definition of a professional fighter, as in they're in a profession, earning money, and trying to get the most money possible for their services. So that's how they approach it. You know, and I guess you know, uh, maybe Vasil is out there, you know, doing the same thing. So he don't want Yeah, bro, like I say. I am with all of that. Like, these guys work hard, bro. Like, this is a grueling sport. You know what I'm saying? And in the era of 50 and 0, when these guys, you know what I'm saying, are going out here to put their 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 behinds on the line, fight after fight with champions or former champions or former title contenders of high level, 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 level. Once you have went through that ringer, it's okay to say, you know what, you know what I'm saying? Like, once you get 35, bro, you're not the same. Yeah. Like this is boxing is a young man sport. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's a young man sport. So for these guys, when they get like, I'm gonna say probably once they get like 33 ish, and you know they're not fighting as frequently. So they might, you know, be once a year, maybe twice a year, depending on who it is. But usually I'm gonna say once a good year. You might you might see these guys in the ring where that inactivity kind of settles in a little bit too, where you get especially like well, Canelo, I'm going back to that one. Mm -hmm. Benavidez is a huge fighter compared to Canelo. Yeah. Like Canelo's like five nine, he's solid, and he a dog, so he make it look easy. But Benavidez like six four. You know what I'm saying like yeah, that's a tough. Like I'm gonna say so, it for Canelo. It, 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 you know he he gets way down there for weight. Like he'll be like around one ninety one ninety five. Bro, that's a tough fight for Canelo. You know, his range, like think about him fighting B-Ball again, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that size where the B-Ball just was. Da, 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 da. Yeah. He's fighting a prime young fighter. So he knows like this is going to be tough. You know, now I don't think Crawford and Crawford's example, I don't think he's like that. I think he kind of, I mean, Crawford has a good resume as well, where it's like, you know, he's, he's, Crawford's fought those top guys, bro, where he, he can, he can say, I don't want to fight this young up and coming guy who got one strike under his belt. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, like if you want to fight me, you got to do X, Y, and Z. Like, for example, him, like a boost fight. If boost was to fight Lubin and fight Ortiz, the boxing fans is going to demand that fight. You know what I'm saying? They're going to be like, yo, Crawford, he's fought Ortiz. He's fought Lubin. You know what I'm saying? Like, the only other fight we want to see is you versus him. You know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't mind seeing Boots versus, like, Earl Spence or something. Honestly, I don't even hear that fight he talked about. Like, yeah. Him beating Earl Spence could get him a Crawford fight. Or, you know I mean, one of those big noticeable wins. Like, yeah. He need one of those big, noticeable yeah. wins. And the thing is, uh, real quick, I mean, he at 147, Boost was looking for that, you know, for you know, a couple of years, whether it was like against a Sean Porter or against a Keith Thurman. And, you know, either one of those, like you say, once you get to a certain point as a professional fighter, you're looking for, you know, what's the most lucrative fight that you could get. And, you know, not necessarily, you know, fight someone that's, you know, like you said, maybe behind you or hasn't. You know, uh, got nothing. A with high them. risk, low reward. That's what I call. Them. Yep, this is exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. So, uh, yeah, with Terrence Crawford, it's like you know, unless if it's something where you know, I, I feel like I know that I'll be able to get through the fight comfortably and still get paid good money, then you know, I'm not necessarily going to be interested in it. So, um, you know, we'll we'll see what happens there with Crawford because you know, at least for me, I, I doubt that he'll be able to secure a Canelo fight. So. What will be his alternative? Uh, we'll, it, that remains to be seen.